Hello, everybody, and welcome to another session on grape varieties. This one on the fantastic, wonderful, age-worthy Chenin Blanc uh, from the Loire Valley and into other countries such as South Africa. This is the advanced version. So this is very much useful for those of you studying your WSET level three, level four and above. Those of you studying level three, you might find that there's a lot more information than you need. But anyway, it's good extra uh, information for you. OK, so first things first. A few things. Uh, of course, these are all of our social media handles. Uh, the top one is me. So my name is Jimmy Smith. I am the owner and founder of West London Wine School, South London Wine School and also Streatham Wine House, a cool, wonderful, charming little wine bar down in South London. Um, we do a huge amount of tastings and courses every year through our schools. We have over 6,000 students that visit, uh, a lot of WSET and Wine Scholar Guild, plus our own consumer tastings. Um, there, our websites are at the bottom there if you are interested. So let's look at the great variety Chenin Blanc. So Chenin Blanc is uh, a variety which is a very lovely style. It's one of the greats that uh, Jancis Robinson has classed as kind of France's Riesling, and that links into its searingly high acidity levels and capability of aging. It makes it one of the finest white wines in the world. Um, so what about its origins and its history? Chenin uh, was first mentioned in the late 15th century, where we have some historical documents from the gorgeous chenon Castle in the Loire Valley. The chenon Castle is situated on the river Cher uh, and uh, is that beautiful, beautiful limestone castle which has the arches built over the river Cher with the gorgeous ballrooms on top of it. It's, it's very splendid. So we have um, historical documents mentioning this variety in different names, names that we believe that Chenin Blanc used to be called. Um, those names uh, that were mentioned, the uh, first one here was Plan d'Anjou, and Plan d'Anjou, uh, or, uh, you know, the plant of Anjou, the area, um, was its uh, first original name. But we have other names that are cited for it as well. Pinot de la Loire and Gros Pinot as well, uh, which are um, alternative names that you may still still see sometimes written of this uh, of this variety. But of course, it's much more uh, highly regarded as Chenin today. The reason why is that there is a place in France called Mont Chenin. Sometimes there is a hyphen between the Mont and Chenin. And uh, a lot of vine clippings were taken to this place where they were planted, uh, including Plan d'Anjou. Uh, and then this variety then made its way back uh, to the Loire, um, where it was planted. And because it says Mont Chenin, uh, they called it Chenin Blanc. It was the grape, the white grape of Chenin of that place. So that's where we think the etymology of the grape variety comes from, our grape name. Um, and it has a parent offspring relationship with the brilliant Sauvignon. Sauvignon is the grape of Jura in the French Comte, uh, also a um, the white version of uh, Tramina uh, or Gewurztraminer rather. Uh, so it has a um, parent offspring relationship, meaning that it is linked uh, and likely to be siblings of Trousseau, which is another grape of the Loire, also, uh, sorry, of um, Jura, also called Bastardo uh, in, uh, in Portugal. And of course, Sauvignon Blanc, the wild variety from the southwest, as in Sauvage, named from Sauvage meaning wild. So it has a really, really rich uh, genetic history behind it, this grape, and that's why it's one of the regal varieties. Um, also, recent DNA profiling in the last 10 years has found out that it is the same as Aguadelo, which is a, um, a white variety found in Galicia. Uh, so it is genetically identical to that style. Um, a little bit of history that goes on beyond that, just because the most cultivated uh, area for Chenin Blanc today is in fact South Africa. So it is important to mention about its origins in South Africa. Um, a Cape commander, Cape colony commander, the first, who was called Jan van Riebeek, uh, first, was the first to plant a number of vines, including Muscat, uh, Semillon and Chenin, we believe Chenin anyway, in, uh, in 1655. 
and uh, it was 1659 that they actually first produced wine from grapes uh, that were planted in the Cape Colony. Uh, and this is important because, uh, of course, it gave the birth to what we call the oldest New World country. Um, apparently, the phrase he shouted was, praise be the Lord, we have produced wine, which, of course, may have been very important for their sanity. Um, it was also originally called Steen in South Africa. It's said to originally sort of come from its etymology from Listan, because uh, varieties were brought via the Canary Islands from the south of Spain. Um, but uh, Steen was its original name, which you may st still find it written. It is the Afrikaans, uh, so we say, for it. Um, the variety then in the vineyard, Shannon Blanc in the vineyard, is a um, remarkably productive, or can be, very vigorous. So it grows very well uh, and quite fertile. You'll find fairly big yields can be produced from it. It is this reason why Oz Clark calls it sometimes that it can be some of the worst wines in the world. And that is because if it's mass produced, it can produce quite simple and sugary wines, certainly very mass commercial Vivre Demi Sec, for instance. So um, it does need to be kept in check. Uh, green harvesting does need to be carried out, as does matching the growth of the vine, the vine vigor uh, with its production, with its budding. Um, so very important to keep it in check. Um, it's found on a variety of soils. Its best drier wines are found on calcare soils, so limestone calcium-based soils, such as the famous Tufo in the Loire Valley, so, so around Vouvray sort of area, but also into the Anjou. So this is quite interesting, as it will produce these linear, fresh, minerally styles. But you will find Shannon in the Loire on more clay soils or schistous soils. The clay soils will retain a bit more water. This promotes more botrytis and is quite important for your sweet production of the grape variety. Uh, the schistous soils and the black schist, um, the area we call Anjou Noir, which is towards the western zone, produces more fuller and rounder expressions that we find of Chanin Blanc, but generally still quite dry. Um, the variety in the Loire certainly is exceedingly high in TA, in, in that tartageable acidity. Very, very fresh, very, very lively, uh, and can actually sometimes be a little bit too much for people. Hence why a bit of age is needed, or a bit of malolactic, or a bit of lees, or a bit of oak, or a bit of blending, or a bit of sugar. There are many things that are done to Chenin Blanc to really combat the level of very high, souring, intense acidity. But it is the major reason why it ages very, very well, gracefully and over a long time. The variety is early budding, thus it suffers quite a lot of spring frosts. Uh, so this is common in the Loire, big issue, in fact, in the Loire. And it's mid-ripening, but this can be extrapolated from being kind of early picked all the way up to sort of later pick, depending on the style that you want. Um, because, of course, there are the kind of um, botrytis led more complex sweet styles as well. Uh, older vines. Now, older bush vine uh, Chanin Blanc, certainly in the Loire and in South Africa, will tend to make um, lower yields. You'll often find more textural, more unctuous wines being produced as a result. Uh, and they can actually withstand more winemaking contact like um, oak fermentations, maturations, malolactic and lees. So these are quite complex and rounded styles. So older vine Chenin certainly is what to look for, for the more complex to, to sort of counter the levels of acidity. Um, but as, for, as for firmly mentioned before, it is susceptible to this bunch rot. So therefore you can make, of course, sweet wine from it. And this is certainly in the clay heavy soils in the Loire Valley, for instance. Um, and there are other, other issues. It does suffer things with um, uh, wood diseases, uh, powdery mildew as well. Uh, so treatments are common in the vineyard, such as, such as copper and sulfate, uh, sulfur spray. In the winery, we know Chenin Blanc is possibly one of the most versatile grape varieties in the world. It produces exceedingly dry, linear wines all the way to complex, unctuous and sweet, certainly with your wines like Chaume, uh, like uh, Côté de Léon, Bonnezeau. Uh, but the dry styles like Vivre Sec and Anjou Sec are also very high in quality as well. And every style in between, 
including demi-sec. So you'll find a progression of sec, dry, demi-sec, medium dry, moule, meaning medium or, or a little bit of sugar, and then the fondue styles or the sweet styles or the botrytis styles, and still to sparkling, of course, as well. It is a major component of Loire sparkling wines. So the Cremant de Loire, uh, it's uh, quite wonderful for, plus um, other styles like Samer Musso uh, and, uh, and others as well, like Vuvray Petillon, different types of Loire sparkling wines. Um, it's high acid, means it works very well with lees contact in those issues of sparkling wines. Um, also, there are maceration styles possible. So this is skin contact uh, at pressing stage and maybe beyond that to add more weight, maybe some phenolic uh, texture to it as well. So you will find some skin contact styles being made of Chenin Blanc. Um, has a great affinity towards malolactic and that is because of its high natural acids. So even if you do convert the malic acid in M MLC, malolactic conversion, or MLF, malolactic fermentation, uh, can be written either or, um, you will find that the acidities are still wonderfully high. So this adds that creaminess and that texture, uh, which is important for uh, more complex styles. Um, has an affinity to well-integrated oak as well. In Loire Valley, you will find that this is actually oak which is normally quite old. Um, it tends to be second fill and beyond. So you'll find that that is more of an oxidated nature to add a bit more, more complexity to Chenin. Um, there's an asterisk there because there are two reasons for this. In South Africa, you will find sometimes some more new oak being used and that will often impart a little bit more character, uh, maybe sort of Chardonnay, Chardonnay nize them, uh, if that is a style or a word. Um, but also a second reason is in Savignere, which is a brilliant little AOC in the Loire, making quite powerful Chenin Blancs, um, normally dry. They actually do uh, use other types of oak, uh, a wood rather. They will use oak, but also chestnut is used as well as acacia, uh, often adding more layers of complexities to the wines and more flavor and aroma. Um, Chenin is more commonly found as a varietal, uh, certainly in the Loire Valley, but even in the Loire, you can find it blended with things like Chardonnay towards Orléans. Um, and in the South African areas, you'll find that it is quite commonly a varietal, but there are more mass production styles where it's blended with Chardonnay and Colombard, the three C's, Chenin, Chardonnay, Colombard. Um, so you can find it as a blending component. Um, because of its high acidities, uh, and certainly if it's from older vines, there is a great capability for this wine to age. Uh, so you'll find that the acidities with the texture, with the age of the vines, produces a capable wine of longevity and often decades. If you look at some of the great producers of the Loire, like Domaine Hewitt, you will find that, uh, I mean, I've done verticals going back to some of their first wines in the 1930s. Uh, even pre their estate, that they still bottle the wines from 1920s. And the wines, even dry, can be phenomenal. So these are wines really capable of up to 100 years age, which is just absolutely fascinating. So where do we find Chenin Blanc? Of course, the well, not of course, but uh, interestingly, the principal place in the world is South Africa. And this number is much lower uh, than it has been in the past. If you go back into the 1980s, it definitely was much higher under the stewardship of KWV. Um, but today that number has been cut down, uh, but it is still the principal grape variety in South Africa, uh, making about sort of 20, 25% of their production. We're looking at about 18,000 hectares under vine, so very important, uh, and mainly around areas around the Svartland, around Malmesbury, for instance, and Riebeek, named after Jan van Riebeek, the uh, very important first Cape commander. Paal as well, the uh, birthplace uh, of KWV, the big cooperative today privately owned, but dominated the industry for most of the 20th century. And Stellenbosch, of course, uh, some great names down in Stellenbosch like Ken Forrester, etc. You will find them in other places. Of course, there are some in the Breeder River Valley, uh, Elgin um, and down towards Bot River, 
Um, but these are the major areas that we find Chenin Blanc. Um, South African Chenin Blanc will tend to be, because it's warmer and drier, you'll tend to find that the fruit is a little bit more um, stone fruit and sort of tropical lead. The acidity can still be quite good, um, but they do tend to be less linear or direct uh, than the Loire. But they tend to be a smoother, still quite fresh acidity. Um, and you'll find um, those rich tropical notes, lots of honey characteristics in them as well. Oak is classically used, but we do say uh, that there are a number of styles of Chenin being found in, the, in South Africa today. Um, and let's go through four of them. The four styles then starts off with sparkling. So for the MCC, the Method Cap Classique, you will find Chenin is used for sparkling. The second style is blended Chenin, often with the other two Cs. So this makes the three Cs, Chenin, Colombard, and then Chardonnay. And these are more mass production styles. The third style would be the one that emerged after the 1990s, after the end of apartheid, which was copying and emulating Chardonnay from places like Australia and Napa. These are big, oaky, quite high alcohol style Chenin Blancs. So creamy, buttery, butterscotch, uh, with kind of 14% alcohols behind them. And the fourth style is much more balanced Chenin Blanc, where you find lower alcohols down towards 12.5%, 13%, well integrated oak, and a mixture of kind of green fruit and stone fruits. And these can be some of the most delicious styles of, uh, of South Africa. Mark my words, they are wonderful Chenin Blancs from that area. Of course, the Loire. The Loire has about half the area under vine than South Africa. Um, it's the Loire majorly, but we do find some of it in the south. There's a little bit in the southwest of France and then Limoux for its sparkling wine production down there. But majorly the Loire and pretty much from where it is anjou Samur uh, and Touraine. The two middle parts are really the kind of continental homelands of Chanon Blanc. Um, favorite, uh, favorite areas in there, of course, include Vouvray. Uh, they include places like Savenière, Anjou, Samur. Uh, so quite a few quite famous styles from dry to sweet and including sparkling as well. Um, the styles here tend to be a little bit more fresher, more acidities, which are a little bit more mineral laden uh, and often more green to stone fruit styles. Uh, honey is quite a traditional element of Chenin Blanc from this area. Great ability to age. Um, what does it taste like? We've gone through this quite a bit. So in the picture, you'll see apples, uh, lemons, but you can have peach and towards pineapple, depending on the warmth of the climate. It is quite mineral laden. It, it can be oaked. It can be quite floral in its youth. You'll often find things like maybe jasmine or chamomile. And then a, a real hallmark of Chenin is this honeyed touch. Um, it is often the key thing to separate it from Chardonnay, that you'll find a honeysuckle or honeyed element to it, um, which is quite wonderful. Uh, as mentioned, dry to sweet, very high in acid is the norm, and a great ability to age. So that is it for our section here on the advanced version of Chenin Blanc. I hope you've enjoyed the history and what it's like in the vineyard, the winery, where we find it and what it tastes like. Um, as ever, we have a huge list of other grape varieties, including the key grape varieties. What you've just learned is ideal for level three and level four of WSET. We do have an intermediate version, which is more for level two. If you have any comments or questions, please get in touch with at Wine with Jimmy. That's me. Uh, and then our wine schools and our wine bar. Um, if you are ever in London, please come for a class or please come for a drink. Um, we have a really fun wine bar. Cool. So thank you so much. It's been uh, a wonderful. Um, I look forward to seeing you again very soon. I hope you've learned something and thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>